expect more, achieve more. The, the technical definition for green chemistry is the design and development of processes and chemical products that are made without the use of hazardous materials, or at least trying to reduce and also eliminate the use of hazardous materials. That's the technical definition. From a more practical standpoint, what chemistry is all about is taking matter and, trans and transforming it into another type of matter. So for society, what we're talking about are chemists taking natural resources and converting these into products that society needs. I've often been asked the question about why green chemistry is needed or why all of a sudden green chemistry. And my, and my answer to that, um, the chemical enterprise has been actually well known for a variety of innovations that have created new materials and new products for use by modern society. And I doubt that any other discipline has really had this type of an impact on our everyday lives as chemistry has. However, we've also had uh, numerous examples of what we call unintended consequences. The production of toxic waste, which has harmed the environment. Uh, making materials for society, which themselves have turned out to be harmful. So chemists have been asking themselves, you know, is this the way we want, chem we want chemistry to be perceived? And of course, the answer is no, it's not. And in terms of the, the type of economic situation we have right now, and in terms of the energy concerns that we have, green chemistry is very important because it's, it's about how we're producing energy. In terms of supplying people on this earth with, uh, with usable water, with potable water, green chemistry is all about that as well. So a, an important aspect right now for us in education is how we're training students for these new and developing jobs, uh, not only in green chemistry, but also in terms of sustainable development, in terms of the energy sector, in terms of um, the energy economy. So green chemistry has a very important role to play in all of that. We have 12 guiding principles which help chemists to determine or to evaluate a chemical process from the design stage right through the, 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 the lifetime of a product, whether or not that material is going to be green, is going to be safe, and is going to be economically viable for society. So as an example of some of these 12 principles, um, as obvious as using materials, using feedstocks that are themselves non-toxic and non-harmful to the environment, how we use energy in the production of products for society, how we use water, using them efficiently. Um, and even the very, the, the end of the life, the, the life cycle of a product, we want to design into that, that when a product reaches the end of its life cycle, that it'll either be reused or recycled into something else that's usable, or it can go into a compost pile and be converted or broken down into molecules that then enter into nature once again. I have students right now who are working on a, a very unique project, taking waste cooking oil from the BSC kitchens and converting this into biodiesel. Taking waste, converting it into energy, something very useful. Uh, they're working on green chemistry ways of making the biodiesel from a more efficient and a cleaner standpoint. And we also produce a little bit of waste in making biodiesel. I have another student who's taking that waste and making it into soap. So we're, gonna, we're hoping to achieve our goal through green chemistry of producing zero waste. A number of these students who have done this research are currently in graduate school. They are obtaining their PhDs in green chemistry. So we have a benefit to our students. They are being trained for the sustainable chemistry enterprise. The future prospects for green chemistry and sustainability at BSC I think are very bright. Uh, Dr. Tammy King and I have been working over this past year in bringing in middle school teachers and students in exposing them to green chemistry lab exercises and talking with the teachers about how to bring green chemistry into their curriculum. We're, we're currently looking at getting a grant that can involve high school teachers during the summers. And another very important project or aspect of green chemistry that we're starting to look at is a more international perspective where we can bring green chemistry to uh, colleges and schools, and particularly in developing countries where they have a, a much, much less access to the type of resources we have and where the production of any type of a waste is strictly prohibited. And green chemistry can be a very, can be a huge benefit in how they're teaching, how they're teaching not only chemistry but also all aspects of science.